it's amazing when I listen to myself, listen to other people, and how the complaints people have reveal so much about them. And one thing that I've realized is that we we create the majority of our own problems, and yet we want to play victim and blame external circumstances. And once you start getting to the root of what makes you unhappy, you realize that you're the cause. You're the cause, and in the same uh, hand, you're the solution. And as the tragedy of uh, Michael Jackson, you know, nothing really should come to us as a, su a surprise in our lives. Yes, there are things that happen out of our control and, and circumstances and, and, you know, catastrophes and things like that. But a lot of it is um, the drop in, bu in, in a bucket. And if you take a, a, a bathtub and you just add small drop, small drop, small drop, you know, over uh, a period of days, it's going to overflow. And a lot of our problems are our own creation because we don't, we're, and we're not conditioned, we're not trained this way in society to see the long-term consequences of our actions. We're very much in the immediate gratification and have a difficulty in denial. And there's a great, there's some videos on it on uh, YouTube, but there's a great study about children. They took young children and put M&Ms in front of them. And they said, here's five M&Ms. You can have them now, or if you wait until I come back into the room, when they were gone 10, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 minutes, I'll give you double the M&Ms. And they, then they tracked the children. The children that were able to delay gratification and eat the m and and wait until they got 10 M&Ms, uh, double the amount, were the ones that ended up being more successful you know, later on in life. And what I've found is most of my problems... Uh, most problems when, when I hear other people speak is a lack of discipline. Uh, an example is people that get in relationships and then end up getting burned and they're heartbroken and things like that. And I'll start digging and asking them questions and they'll inevitably say, oh yeah, I saw warning signs, I saw there were red flags, but I choose to, chose to ignore it because the immediate gratification of feeling loved or the sex or being in a, in a romantic relationship outweighed it and there's a, a price to pay when we choose the immediate over the long term and you look at someone like Michael Jackson and there was a they interviewed a, I think it was a lawyer who said man I saw this coming I warned his family he's he's uh, abusing pre prescription drugs and um, he needs to to he needs help and we have this sense of uh, invulnerability, and especially people in power. They have a sense of invulnerability, invul and it ends up, you know, our destruction, our demise, our problems, whether they be financial, relationship, uh, familial, um, career, is all stuff that is accumulation of small, seemingly insignificant choices. And you want to revolutionize your life, revolutionize the seemingly small, insignificant choices. Start small. Um, things like the, what we put, the food we put in our mouth. You know, we are the digging, we dig our own graves with our lifestyle choices, with, uh, you know, if we don't exercise, if we're stressed out, and it's really hard, it takes a, a, a disciplined mind, but to see the long-term consequences of our habit patterns, and what a, a real, the core source of our problems is lack of discipline, lack of ability to delay gratification, um, a lack of inner contentment, so we look externally to feed our, our emptiness. And then we can't understand why we r continue to run into brick walls or have these problems. 
And it takes the magnifying glass, man, because a lot of our seemingly insignificant actions we don't examine with the magnifying glass. And we don't dig deep and, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just a belief that the unexamined life um, leads, eventually leads to disaster. And part of the joy is not taking the magnifying glass and saying, oh, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did that. Part of, one of the greatest joys is when I put the magnifying glass to myself is see, and seeing my flaws is the growth process, the person that I evolved to. There's no really end goal destination that it's a shift in the way we think. We're conditioned to believe, oh, there's an end goal. You have to get here. You have to get there. You have to get a career. You have to get a wife. You have to get a husband. You have to get money. Uh, da, 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 da. I love the daily journey of uncovering and examining my strengths, my flaws, and improving and growing. It's kind of like the uh, software. You look at software and the majority of software when it's released has bugs and, and uh, things that are just wrong with it. And I love to see the, the, the combination of user feedback uh, to the developer and seeing this, the evolution of software, the evolution of everything, and yet sometimes we're so hard on ourselves, and we don't, we we criticize ourselves, we beat ourselves up. I did this wrong. I'm here, I'm fault. I have uh, faults here. I lack this. I lack that, and it's just a slight shift looking at it from a different perspective and saying, "Man, this is a space. This is an area which I can grow and I, I can learn. I can evolve." with no end destination in mind, just the joy and love of growth, of improving, of just becoming more efficient, becoming more, just just evolving as a human being. And once we do this, it's, it's taking all that energy we spend externally and just harnessing it internally harnessing it, harnessing it, and becoming very stingy with our life energy. And if you watch the previous video, our life energy is the most precious resource. And the least amount of interference, static, unnecessary burdens, responsibilities, obligations. And once you start becoming content, you realize how little you need, how little you need of... Uh, of spiritual teachers, how little you need of material things, how little you need of the world, how you're not dependent on a love relationship for happiness, how you could just kind of bask in your own presence. And that's it. That's enough. <laughs> it's just a very fulfilling place to be. And it's totally contradictory to the expectations society uh, society puts upon us and it's really a, a valid statement you're just dancing to your own drummer part of the problem is that we are constantly dancing to the drumbeat of, of external forces